Brought to you in part by support from the Lemelson Foundation, established by independent inventor Jerome Lemelson. The foundation recognizes and supports inventors and invention-based enterprises that improve lives in the U.S. and developing countries. Production funding for this BizKids television special is also provided by a coalition of America's credit unions, supporting financial literacy and the entrepreneurial spirit. America's credit unions, where people are worth more than money. Every day, America's credit unions help members with their financial needs and with programs like Invest in America. It's only fitting that credit unions help fund this presentation because supporting entrepreneurs is what we do. Learn more at lovemycreditunion.org. From around the globe, four young entrepreneurs chosen to compete in a contest to change the world. Education changes everything. There should be some technology that should be able to capture these gases. I naturally like to solve problems. And this is really how you scale an innovation so that it can be constructed locally. And Each has only three minutes to make their presentation before some of the world's most influential people at the Ashoka Staples Youth Social Entrepreneur Competition in Tucson, Arizona. There's a lot of problems with the way solar energy is done these days. Just 180 seconds that will make or break their idea. How can we bridge this gap and how can we use technology to create a supportive health education network? 180 seconds to make the most important presentation of their lives. And the prize? The world. The winner of the Staples Ashoka Youth Social Entrepreneur Competition is you didn't think we were actually going to tell you the winner now, did you? No matter where you live in the world, there are problems to be solved. Problems such as air pollution, lack of clean water, of health care and education. But the good news is that there are people, both young and old, that are working on new ways to solve these old problems. These people are called social entrepreneurs. And rather than generating profit for profit's sake, they build sustainable ventures to help solve problems. And anyone can be an innovator. You don't need loads of cash or big fancy office. Exactly. There are resources all around you that you can use in new ways to help make a difference. All you need is an idea and the will to follow through. The civic group Ashoka is the world's largest organization of social entrepreneurs. Ashoka provides guidance, resources, and networking to social entrepreneurs to help make their visionary ideas a reality. Now, Ashoka has teamed up with Staples to create a competition for young entrepreneurs that are using technology to help solve social problems. Entries were received from all over the world. Over 50 countries. And then reviewed by a panel of judges. Really smart judges. And of all of the entries, four finalists were chosen. Those four were then flown to Tucson, Arizona, where they were given only three minutes to make a presentation before global leaders in technology. Three minutes. I'd be terrified. I know. We're talking about pitching to companies like Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook, Google, and DreamWorks. So who were these four finalists? And what were their creations? Well, let's start with Kartik, a young man from Bangalore who used Facebook to save lives. Uh, my name is Kartik Narasethi. I'm the founder of socialblood.org. Uh, we connect uh, citizens of same blood type onto Facebook. So when in emergencies, people can contact each other and get help. Throughout my childhood, I was not considered as a very bright student. There is one person who never uh, lost hope in me. It was my dad. I used to watch him uh, run his uh, non-profit organization when I was a kid. He has this organization where they used to help villages get loans and do some developmental work in their own communities. He used to donate some money to poor students for their education. This made me uh, really go towards helping out to people. He used to always tell me that you, we never bought anything to this world, so you never take anything back. Whatever you have to do, you have to help out people and leave your mark. For me, the greatest thing is somebody should benefit or somebody should be happy because you're there. When I do something, I always have this in mind. If I invest my time or whatever, I'm not going to lose anything. It all started when I uh, you know, read this 
a newspaper article about a girl and their family suffering from a disease called thalassemia where the girl needs transfusion every 25 days and uh, it made me think like in a country of billion people you know more than a billion people it's very difficult for them to find blood donors i don't know what to do but after some days uh, i saw this request by one of my friend where he asked all his you know connections on facebook that he's looking for a blood donor for his dad uh, who is going a heart surgery surprisingly after 2 hours he posted back saying uh, thanks to facebook we found a blood donor for my dad this made me think very deeply on you know how i could use facebook as a platform to help blood recipients to find blood donors all over india pretty much the rules are same the patients attendants and relatives are supposed to arrange for blood for the patient and at the last minute when the patients attendants are already so tense it becomes very difficult for them to run around looking for potential donors india has a third largest population on facebook so with that kind of numbers i thought i can do some really cool things using the connections on facebook and connecting a blood recipient blood donors it's very simple what we do is we connect people who need blood and who wants to give blood we just bring these two people onto the same platform so they can help each other we are innovative because we took a existing technology like facebook and tried to use it in a simple and very effective way where people have never thought about it we are trying to fill the social needs with the power of social networks we don't want to make it a, a country wise application where you have a list of people who need blood in different areas so it works better when you have you know requests around you you know 5 km range and you can go help people one day we got this request where a small kid who is going a heart surgery needs blood i happened to see it and i reposted it on the wall and i asked people to come to the hospital so i never did any blood donation in my life so i thought okay let me go do it for the first time i went there to the hospital and uh, i saw a couple of people standing in the line with me when they asked me where are you coming from and which organization do you represent i said uh, social blood so the guy next uh, behind me said i'm also coming from social blood social blood is sustainable because we don't have much operational costs it's very easy for us to deploy the solution in any country you wanted so right now we're doing it in india but once we have the location this application we can do it anywhere it's not like you have to be rich to help someone out it feels really great that i'm just 22 and i'm able to give back to the society i don't have to be rich i'm just a normal person who is doing something in my own capabilities to help people around it feels great i'm really excited i didn't expect uh, the success i got right now uh, i didn't expect the 1500 people to join the groups so i want to just replicate the whole process in all parts of the world i believe the whole universe is uh, built up on a network where every human being helps other human being social blood is about making this world a more compassionate place at the end of the day uh, social blood is saving lives what what could be better than that hi my name is eden full i am 19 years old i'm from calgary alberta canada and i developed a project called the sun saluter when i was growing up my dad's an artist and he'd bring home all of these magazines and pictures of people doing different things what really appealed to me was solar panels you know to me at the time when i was like 5 or 6 that was pretty magical i i didn't understand the science behind it and it seemed really interesting to me for the next couple of years i'd enter these science fairs and i started to get really frustrated you know i wasn't getting enough solar power out of these panels and so i started looking into how can you make a solar panel more efficient The way solar panels work now is they're really inefficient. This is because they're not pointed at the sun. This means that when it's not perpendicular to the sun, it's not hitting um, the surface of the solar panel at exactly the angle you need to really maximize the number of electrons. By going and pointing the solar panel at the sun, you improve its efficiency by up to 40%. You're getting enough electricity and every last drop of electricity out of that solar panel as you can at every point during the day. What I want to do is try to make it cheaper for you to rotate individual panels or smaller sets of panels on your roof in your backyard so that people who are using solar panels in their house or in a village will be able to use them in an optimized way. 
Solar panels as they are right now are very expensive when you want to point them at the sun. They use these expensive motors, which cost tens of thousands of dollars. They're only viable when you're using them on 65,000 panels in the middle of Arizona. These motors, not only are they expensive, but they're really hard to maintain. The principle behind the sun saluter is that it uses um, a series of bimetallic coils. So this means having two types of metal that are welded together. And so you have steel and aluminum and they're blast welded so that when they're connected together, because these two types of metals are different, one will expand at a different rate than the other when it's heated up. And so that means when one is heating up more than the other, it'll want to bend in one direction. And so when it bends in one direction, based on the ambient temperature change, it can cause um, a rotation of the solar panel. At different times during the day, when these bimetallic coils will displace at different times, then that causes your solar panel to want to rotate to follow the sun like a sunflower. I'm not using more electricity to rotate the solar panel to get electricity. That is really counterintuitive and frustrating and doesn't make any sense to me. What I want to do is be able to incorporate harnessing that thermal component of solar energy while being able to collect as much light as possible in order to stimulate the electrons. Last summer, I had a chance to deploy two pilot projects for the Sun Saluter in Kenya, and it really helped me to sort of understand how can I make the technology more durable? Do they actually have access to bamboo? Where can they get recycled metal? Like, these were all things that you can only understand once you actually go on the ground. Each of these villages has about 500 people. A lot of them have bought cell phones and solar lanterns, but they don't have a consistent way to charge them. I remember the first week I was there, I was just going to do an assessment, and there was this woman that I met there, and she has three kids. She's a wife, she, she cooks and she cleans, and she's doing everything that she can for her family, and she showed me these three solar lanterns she has. She was telling me how the solar panel that came with these lanterns, it was enough to charge two of them, but there wasn't enough to charge a third lantern. And I thought, well, this problem can be easily solved. I'm going to go back into town, make sure I buy the right materials, and I will build you a sun saluter. I came back like a week and a half later, maybe, and I asked around, where is she? And a lot of the, the villagers were, were telling me she got trampled by a buffalo. She wandered into the dark, right, to collect firewood. It really struck me that if she had enough electricity be, to be charging that solar lantern, the whole situation would have been avoided. Part of the reason that I'm still working on this technology is I would really like to do my part so that something like this doesn't happen. When I was in Kenya, I didn't really know what I was doing. So this is how I got in contact with Daryl DeBoer. Um, he's a, an architect who works a lot with sustainable materials, and one of his passions is in bamboo. I've been working with alternative materials, which are actually the ones that people have been using for millions of years. Earth, straw, very simple materials, things that aren't owned by companies, that uh, are the kinds of things that three quarters of the world lives in. He has a lot of insight into what kind of materials should I be using and how should I be joining the bamboo together. And these are all really important skills that I'm still learning. He's definitely an expert in the area. That might be a way that we could cooperate. I think if she succeeds, it allows for an incredible increase in the efficiency of what we're trying to do right now. Being able to use energy much more efficiently and effectively is really the answer. I mean, we're running out of resources. How do we make the sun saluter something that's viable in many different locations across the world? Really, the most important thing is designing a technology that can be used in as many different places as possible. That's how you really get something to scale. I really think of myself as an inventor, an ideas person, someone who comes up with different ideas that you know have a social good and a social impact on the world. And I really want to do my part to really make sure that these ideas are going to scale in the way that they need to in order to um, get them out to as many people as possible. I believe that passion plus hard work equals success. If you like something, you care about it, and you're willing to work for it, you can make anything happen. My name is Vineet Singhal. I'm a senior at Stanford University, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of Anjana Patient Education. 
Ever since I can remember, I had been overweight, and that problem escalated as I moved from India to Saudi Arabia to New Zealand. In New Zealand, I actually remember being heavily bullied because of my condition. Um, I delayed puberty, and so I stuck out, you know, short, chubby Indian boy with glasses in a very homogenous, white environment. And one time I remember these three bullies sitting in front of English class and I was coming late to class. This one boy screamed in front of the entire class, hey, Benit, show us your cleavage. And this was an example of the kind of experiences that I had that led to me having all sorts of mental health problems and all sorts of self-esteem and self-confidence issues. I realized that this was a problem that not just I had, this was a problem common to many people around the world. My parents, who had always been physicians, who had always been learning about different kinds of medical issues and always had instilled in me a deep desire to become a physician. That desire was actually cemented when I took time off from school and worked full time for this free clinic in Galveston, Texas. The clinic, I started a health education program which specifically utilized my experience overcoming obesity and overcoming diabetes and overcoming clinical depression. And this was a very simple thing, but it eventually led to a lot of good things down the line, especially when I saw patients coming back and, you know, on a monthly, bi-monthly basis with having made extremely significant behavioral changes. Our mission at Clinic by the Bay is to provide preventative and primary care. Critical to that mission is having accessible, user-friendly health education materials. So Angela Patient Education is a Stanford-based nonprofit organization that aims to institute quality health education programs utilizing technology at free clinics. Our first project is the Health Education Database Project, where we provide free clinics with access to health education materials that are visually appealing, textually minimal, and available in multiple languages designed to be culturally appropriate. This is the first ever health education database developed specifically with free clinics in mind, and we have done this with the help of our volunteers and our faculty mentors. Can you click on that so we can see that? We use Anjana's database. It's a health education database. They create information that is accessible, easy to use, simple, visually pleasing, and very user-friendly. It's also in multiple languages, which here at Clinic by the Bay, most of the patients that we serve don't speak English. It's not their first language. It's usually Spanish or Cantonese. So this question is specifically Our second project is called Project Not Alone, which enables clinics to utilize tablet computers for the purpose of reaching out to socioeconomically disadvantaged populations. Especially in certain free clinics, when people are waiting for as much as three hours, we believe that the time that is spent reading magazines can be utilized for positive health education. Our third project deals with text messaging. Everyone has a cell phone, and we want to utilize that phenomenon to, in order to reach out to underserved populations, giving them reminders to take their medication, make future appointments, or just simply advice on leading a healthy lifestyle. It's been a perfect match and a great partnership. It's had an incredible impact on our volunteers to have information that they can easily share with the pa our patients who then learn how to take better care of themselves, eat better, exercise more, and ultimately live healthier lives. So we have you know, different projects that are going on at Anjana, so we have JP. We started out with a team of two people and we realized the importance of targeting free clinics, especially with something as serious and as underemphasized as health education was concerned. We built a team, we got friends together, we got volunteers, we got people to help out, and we've grown to a team of over 200 people, which constitute mostly undergraduates and graduate students from Stanford and Berkeley, as well as students from 14 college campuses around the country. This is really what we see as the central focus of the organization going forward. The organization's model is designed to be sustainable. Our goal is not to provide the health education volunteers, but rather empower and enable free clinics to be able to do the health education themselves because we know that they are the ones that know the most about their own specific clinics. The reality is there are a lot of health education materials and information out there for all of us on the internet, in books, in brochures. But what Anjana has done is created materials that are easy to use, user-friendly, visually pleasing, so this is a critical opportunity for us, uh, I think particularly in this country, to improve health outcomes by using health technology. I think that technology has huge potentials in healthcare. 
But I also think that because the healthcare industry is always behind in the technology industry, there needs to be some specific efforts made to bridge that gap. And this is where Anshina Patient Education is helping do that. If you have a burning issue, if you have a burning problem, you can make a change, you can make a difference. It just takes you, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of passion, and a lot of perseverance, and a few friends to help you. You can do it. Hi, I'm Vivek Naya. I'm the founder of Damasco Fortune and the main idea guy. Thank you. Money is one of the important things to a certain extent. After that, it's a pleasure of doing something that you feel should be done and that gives you happiness. That is what we need in life. We constantly try to do something better for the betterment of many people. That will give you real happiness. For me, my first hero is by my parents, especially my dad, who actually grew by struggling a lot. Uh, through him, I got inspired like anything. <laughs>